started. So tonight's session, um, this is pretty generic uh, careers in state government, but tonight we're going to walk through the actual application process and I'll go through these um, rather quickly. I assume everyone can read, so I'm not going to read them all to you. Um, for example, our disclaimer, basically, Johnny and I are not attorneys, so we're not here to give you any legal advice. You shouldn't take it as that. Um, we're not here to give you any tax information. We're just simply here to talk to you about jobs and the process to get a job with the state of Illinois. Our mission with the Department of Revenue is to administer Illinois tax laws. Um, we've been in business since the 20s. We've been collecting tax revenues. Um, since then, we started out with one and we're up to over 80 different taxes that we collect. Um, we do it with uh, in a fair, consistent manner and um, provide accurate and timely, reliable funding information to both state and local constituents. So, again, a little history of IDOR. This is our main office down in Springfield, Illinois. This is where the majority of our jobs are. However, we do have other jobs in the six locations across the state. Um, we were funded back in the 1920s to um, uh, receive the uh, motor fuel tax. And uh, today we do over 80 different taxes. Um, we have about 1300 employees over those six sites. And we are a very stable state agency. I mean, we have to collect the revenue or the taxes for the state. That's how we get our revenue and disperse those um, funds. So uh, some agencies may, you've heard in the past, have budget cuts or you know slashing position. That is not the case for us. We are um, almost always hiring. Um, and speaking of hiring, uh, if you live in the Illinois, if you live in Illinois and you pay taxes in Illinois, then you are one of our customers and we service anyone who pays taxes in Illinois. So we like to think that um, our state is very diverse and we want our employees to also reflect um, that diversity. So um, we sometimes get a question about, you know, will you hire me if I'm over a certain age or under a certain age or if I this or that? We don't care. As long as you are qualified um, to do the job and want to work hard, then yes, we will hire you. Here are six locations. Again, Springfield, we have two in Chicago, Des Plaines in Chicago, right downtown. We have an office in Rockford, Illinois, and then two down south, uh, Fairview Heights in Marion, Illinois. A little bit about the benefits. Again, I'll just touch on a few of the um, key points here. I think the biggest advantage for working in state government is the 37.5 work hour. Um, which basically comes down to work-life balance. So you, we very rarely have to work overtime, a little maybe right now because it's tax season. So some areas are working a little overtime, but the majority of time you do not work nights or weekends. Um, we have 25 paid days off available in the first year, 10 paid vacations uh, days in the first year and up to 25 days annually. Uh, that includes 13 paid holidays, uh, there's rollover and sick and in some of our areas, um, flexible work schedule. Something we're very proud to offer is 10 weeks of paid leave for parental leave. And you don't find that in a lot of other um, employers in the state. We have um, basic uh, benefits, uh, health, dental, vision. There's no waiting period on those. We do offer some life insurance that some of it is complimentary. And then there's additional coverage that you can purchase. We have things like the health savings plan, dependent care, flexible spending, all of those types of um, add-on benefits. And we also have or are considered a public um, institution. So you may be eligible for public service loan forgiveness um, depending on your situation. Um, we do offer tuition reimbursement for our employees. So I always encourage um, folks to, if you're thinking about going to school, is to get a job with us and then pursue the tuition reimbursement program so that we can help you pay for um, uh, uh, tuition at the school. Um, we do offer a retirement plan and also a deferred compensation plan and also a 529 college savings plan. So a lot of um, extra benefits that we provide. At Revenue, we have a very robust um, training, learning, and uh, development department. So you can take a variety of classes online. Um, you can go to them back in person now. Um, there's something called CMS University that you can take classes through depending on your position. 
We do um, work with the AFSCME union in the upward mobility program. Um, and um, we also compensate our employees for bilingual uh, skills if they use those on the job. And here's a list of other voluntary benefits that the state of Illinois offers. Um, everything from pet insurance to um, critical illness coverage. So um, quite a few extra perks for working at the state. And as Johnny mentioned earlier, this is the CMS counseling website, um, or excuse me, email address that you can email, and they will help you look at your prior experience and education and help you determine which jobs that the state has that you would be a good candidate for. Um, it's a free service, and um, I highly encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, there's also a what's called Disabled Worker Training Program, or DWTP, where we hire individuals with disabilities. So if you have questions on that, um, there's information on the website, as well as um, our Illinois Veterans Outreach Program. Uh, this is what our website looks like. So when you go to that tax.illinois.gov, uh, this is where you will first land. And then I believe Johnny is going to go live for us right now. So give him just a minute to switch over. And I'm going to stop. Oh, he got it. There he goes. Hello, good evening, everybody. Uh, so this is our main uh, website for Illinois Department of Revenue. Uh, it is tax.illinois.gov. Uh, you will scroll to about IDOR, uh, and then you will scroll down where it says employment opportunities. This will give you our main web page for recruitment. Uh, here you will find uh, different tabs where you're able to navigate from our job posting to signing up for job alerts, uh, to creating an account on state of Illinois uh, electronic applications. As we said, we have frequently hired positions uh, within Illinois Department of Revenue. These are revenue tax specialist trainee, revenue auditor trainee, special agent trainee, and collection officer trainee. Uh, it's going to give you a little overview of what those positions are. Um, also, we have different pages for working at IDOR, resources for living in the capital city. So in case you do want to move down to Springfield and you would like to know the area and learn about different opportunities within the Springfield area, uh, you visit that link. Uh, learn about employment benefits, our veterans program. Uh, if you would like to know where we will be at uh, to meet us in person or to see if we have any other upcoming events, uh, you go to the upcoming outreach events. Uh, as we said, we do have a monthly virtual statewide recruiting events. Uh, they're all recorded and then we will post them on our website. So you'll go to that link. Uh, and then upcoming outreach events, that's when we go to job fairs. So we have events directly with IDES at some of their offices, some of the veteran um, medical centers, uh, some of the IDVA centers, we do go out to do some outreach there. Uh, for our purposes, we will be going to job posting. Uh, this would take it directly to our main webpage for central management service, so where all positions are posted for all 27 other agencies. Uh, that website is work.illinois.gov, and it will forward you to this new website. Here uh, today, we will be covering the office administrator for position and how to apply. Uh, so you will click on the position itself. Uh, something you want to learn about looking through each of these applications or the posting is to look at the date when the position was posted. Uh, this position was posted on March 3rd, is gonna give you the location of the position. This position is in Springfield. Uh, it's gonna give you a little overview of our department uh, additional to that, look at the closing date. This is a very important date to keep in mind. Uh, on March 24th at 11.59, this posting will close. So if you um, put in your application at midnight, you will not be able to apply for this position. So make sure you look at this closing date and time and apply within the time frame. Uh, if you don't do that, then you won't be able to apply for that position. Uh, and you'll have to wait for that position to be posted again. Uh, it could be in two months or it could be in two years. This is dependent on the need of the position. So uh, please keep that in mind when looking at these uh, postings. Additional to that, you will see that it's gonna give you a salary range. Uh, it does give you an anticipated salary for non-state employees, uh, the county, uh, if it is a bargaining unit position. So if it's within the unit, it will give you a bargaining unit number. 
Uh, if not, it will state exempt from bargaining unit, which means that you're not in the union. And usually those positions are management, which are public service administrators or senior public service administrator positions. Um, so moving down a little bit lower, uh, each posting is going to give you job responsibilities. Um, with these responsibilities, you want to see if you have done these jobs at your other previous employment or have you done them through your internship or just personal um, volunteer work or any of that. Uh, try to match that to, to your resume. Uh, another important part about this posting is the minimum qualifications. Uh, you want to make sure that you meet those minimum qualifications. Uh, because if you don't meet the minimum qualification, uh, this website would automatically send you an email within 48 to 72 hours letting you know that you don't meet the minimum qualification for this position uh, and you would not be moving forward. If you receive that email that you did not qualify for that position, that's the end of your application. Now, if you don't receive an email, that does not mean that you, you're not going to receive an offer. It just means that they're going to be reviewing all applications that were uh, posted onto the system. So please make sure you meet at least the minimum qualification. How do you meet the minimum qualification? You have to make sure you have that on your resume and you answer those questions that they will be asking you on the application. Uh, for this specific position, uh, it says you need skills and mental development of at least two years of studies in secretary or business college or two years of office experience. So it's not saying that you need those two years to study in business college, but it's saying it's either two years of business college or two years of office experience. Uh, addition to that, uh, you do need to have a completion of high school diploma or four years of office assistant experience or four years of independent business experience. Uh, make sure you look at the preferred qualifications. Uh, these preferred qualifications is what's going to distinguish you from other candidates. Uh, everybody could meet the minimum qualification, but these preferred qualifications are the one that we're going to be looking at to give you, provide you a score that's going to be uh, who's going to get ranked based on what your resume and your application states. So if you have those preferred qualifications on your resume on the application, you will receive a higher score, meaning that you'll be on a higher on a ranking level. So uh, as soon as everybody applies, all the applications are going to be scored by central management services. Uh, as these applications are scored, then they are ranked and then they'll be sent over to our team uh, with the selection team with HR. Uh, also, conditions of employment, uh, depending on the position, they might have some conditions that you have to meet. Uh, per se, my position, I have to drive uh, to job fairs, so I have to have the ability to have a driver's license and be able to make it to those, to those job fairs. Uh, specifically for this one, you need to have the ability to lift up to 50 pounds. So make sure you meet those conditions of employment. Um, being that you work with the Illinois Department of Revenue, uh, one of the ones that we encourage everybody is to make sure they have uh, tax compliance, meaning that you paid all your taxes for the year, um, because we will be able to, we will not be able to provide you a position if you don't have that compliance. Uh, that doesn't mean if you owe taxes, you're not able to work for the state. Uh, what that means is you need to get to compliance and either set up a, um, a payment plan or set up a way to be able to apply for that position. Uh, additional to that, it will take you. It'll tell you the work hours for this position. It's from eight to four thirty. Some positions will start eight thirty to five. Um, depending on department needs, you might be able to have the opportunity to have a flex schedule with Illinois Department of Revenue. Uh, but it's all on department needs, so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, for this location, work location is going to be near the address. Uh, this is our um, Springfield address, one hundred one West Jefferson Street. Uh, if it would have been a position in Chicago, it would have said five fifty five West Monroe. Um, the agency in contact, uh, that is the person who posted the position. Um, they most of the times will have their email address in case you do have any additional questions to directly with that uh, ap application. Uh, for this one, she provided her phone. So you're able to reach out if you do have any specific questions directly with this position. Um, so you keep on scrolling down. Uh, once you get to the bottom of the posting, uh, it says apply. As you Click apply. Now you have to put in your email information. And it'll take you to back to the same page uh, at this time. Uh, this is where you have to make sure you have uploaded your resume. 
what I tell people the most important part about uploading your resume is that some of these uh, other fields are going to be automatically filled by your resume, uh, but don't don't make sure that you look through that application. Sometimes it doesn't. So just make sure you review both your resume and your application prior to sending it in. Um, some positions do need a cover letter, uh, depending on the type of position you might and you might not. It's just depending on each department. Uh, for this position currently, it does ask for cover letters, so that's why the cover letter is on there. Uh, if you did attend any colleges or if you did attend high school, uh, those are some additional documents you're able to upload. Uh, the transcripts, uh, they don't need to be official. You can have an unofficial transcript for your school. Uh, if you do have a high school diploma or a high school transcript, you're able to upload it here onto the system. Uh, that way you're able to meet those uh, minimum qualifications that they, they usually ask. Either they'll ask for four years of college, two years of college, high school diploma, uh, and you're able to show that by uploading those documents. Um, if you're part of voluntary groups, so if you're a veteran, um, a lot of those documents you send them directly to Central Management Services as far as your DD-214 to receive those additional points uh, for the application. Um, but if you don't, if you do have other awards that you received while you were in the military, uh, you're able to add those to this document. Uh, if you have a document through the National Guard which says your last position, you're able to add that document to this uh, website. Uh, the next part of the application is your profile information. Uh, for this person, Abe, honest Abe, uh, obviously, uh, make sure you have the correct information on here. Uh, a lot of the times this would get automatic um, generated depending on what your resume says. Uh, but if your phone number and your resume is not the correct one or the most updated, please make sure your updated uh, phone number is on here. Uh, and the same thing with your email. Additional to that, it will be your previous employment. As I said, if you upload your resume, uh, some of these will automatically um, be input into the system, uh, but sometimes it doesn't. So if it doesn't, you just make sure you're up, updated. Uh, for this person, uh, most of the stuff was uploaded, but in case you did need to add it, uh, add more information, you click add, you put the name, uh, job title, uh, let them know if it's your current position, your start date, end date. It is very important to uh, put in the dates for each job that you uh, have previous experience in, uh, because we are calculating uh, especially when they says if you need two years of experience in clerical work uh, and you have a position that states clerical and it only has, let's say, um, from March to March and is only one month. Um, so, yeah, make sure you put the correct dates that you worked in that we were able to calculate the amount of time that you worked for that position. Uh, the next part will be your education. Here you're able to add. Uh, so if, you have, if you're going for a master's degree, if you're in a bachelor's degree, if you have your high school diploma, you're able to update on this. Uh, as I said, some positions, they do require a high school diploma. So I would add that high school diploma on there. Some require a bachelor's degree, some require four years of college. So there, if you did not have a degree, um, you're able to do uh, here. Uh, so bachelor's, um, the degree status you'll do in progress. And that's how the, you let them know that the number of credits you are going to get. So if, if it's City Colleges of Chicago, and then your major field was General Studies per se, um, you're able to do that, and it just adds it up to your uh, profile. Additional to that, uh, you're able to provide specific skills. Uh, this person has project manager. Uh, so if they have a PMP, you're able to add that in your specific skills, either on the skills section or on the certification, depending on uh, what type of skills are you going. Now, if you have advanced skills in Excel or some of the other Microsoft programs, uh, you're able to kind of write this on here. Uh, so if you know how to make queries uh, through Access, uh, you know, write that as one of the skills you have. Uh, whether you're an expert, intermediate, or beginner, it gives you that opportunity to write that on there. Uh, moving down low, here is going to give you the option uh, to see in what areas you would like to be working. So if you live in the northern region, per se, you want to stay here around the Cook County, DuPage, Lake County, uh, Grundy County, uh, you're able to put those as your preferred locations. Now, if you're open to, let's say, moving down to Sangamon County, that's where down to Springfield, you're able to do that. Uh, once you set this up, it's going to give you a profile where 
whenever a position is available in those counties, uh, they will go, they're going to send you an email letting you know this position has become available uh, and it closely matches your experience. So it is very important to do those geographic mobility opportunities. Uh, if you do have an additional area you'd like to add, you're able to do up to five, I believe. Uh, job specific information here, it is important for us to have this information. So I always tell people, especially if they attended one of our events, um, to go here and say workshop and then uh, IDOR workshop. Uh, that way we know that we're doing our job and we're meeting a, a wide variety of persons who are looking for employment with the state of Illinois. Uh, the diversity questions are important to answer. Um, this is just for our purposes with HR, so please answer if you like. Uh, these are all uh, voluntary, so some people don't don't like to answer these questions, so you don't. Uh, but please answer them for our sakes, just for us to be able to see we're meeting uh, the population of people who are underserved, or we're meeting those people who are not currently be working for the state of Illinois and are looking to work for the state of Illinois. So. Uh, another is self-identified for disability. Once again, all this is optional. You're able to answer those questions optionally. Uh, veteran star status, also an optional one. So usually if you don't answer these, I'm going to have to answer these. Sorry. So now it's going to go to each of those questions uh, through the application. Uh, as I said, if you do, if you don't answer these questions um, to meet the minimal qualification, you will not be able to move forward. So make sure you read each of these questions specifically uh, for each position that you're going to be applying for. Uh, and when you do answer these questions, try to match your application to your resume. So if in your resume you state that you have four years of experience in customer service. Uh, when you write the answer, they're asking you about customer service, right? I have four years of customer service with the name of the company that you work for. Uh, and then that's going to match with your resume. It makes it a little bit easier for central management services to be able to match your time and the place that you were working for that position or the, or that skill that they're looking to do. Um, I'm going to go through 1 question. Are you currently in default on a repayment of any state educational loan? State law provides that any employee who is in default or payment of an educational loan for a period of six months or more than amount of 600 or more should more as a condition of employment, make a satisfactory loan repayment arrangement with make maker or guarantor of the loan. So once again, as I said, uh, if you are, are in default, you're able to have the opportunity to work with them to do a repayment plan. Uh, but these questions, if you don't answer them correctly, you will automatically be uh, disqualified for those positions. So make sure you answer the questions uh as best as you can uh so let's see i'm gonna go down to one that has more specifically to the job so this one says how many total years and months of office experience office assistant experience or independent business experience do you possess once again you want to make sure you match what your resume states so if your resume states that you have six years of office experience with McDonald's, uh, you want to make sure you write that on there. So uh, I have six years experience with McDonald's as an office assistant. And then elaborate. So for this one, it only gives you, uh, I believe, um, 500 characters. So try to make the most of what you're able to answer. Uh, if you go over the 2,000 characters, it won't let you move forward. Uh, but for those who are not able to complete the application, just make sure you complete the application before the uh, closing date of the posting. Uh, but if you need to work on it later and just complete the application now, you're able to save the application. Uh, and that saves the application for you. So then you're able to look for positions uh, within, uh, so you'll see your profile, and, and it's gonna give you the opportunity to look at all your save applications. So you go here where it says save applications. 
uh, is going to have that position that you apply for. So in case you need to, uh, something comes up and you need to complete your application later on, you're able to do that. Uh, the system lets you save the, everything you've done and you don't have to start from the beginning. So moving forward, uh, I don't think I have anything else that I will be covering at this time. We have a couple questions in the chat box. Uh, Mary asked, how far past can you go back? If you mean how far back in your employment career should you list, um, you want to go all the way back as far as you can. Um, middle school, high school jobs you worked, volunteer, any um, sports or clubs activity you did, first jobs out of school. Um, what I encourage people to do is to create a, a master document in Word and list every single thing. And as Johnny said earlier, do it in detail. And we're not kidding. Um, you know, if you just say I was a receptionist for 10 years at ABC Law Firm, that doesn't really tell us much. But if you put on there, I was a receptionist for 10 years and I answered 200 calls a day for 15 attorneys, I ordered lunch, I scheduled meetings, I did travel um, arrangements, I did bu budget reconciliation, I also did procurement. You see how much more in depth that is. So when they are evaluating your application for the position, the more detail you give, um, the better, uh, the higher your score will be. So you really want to make sure that um, unlike the corporate world where you usually do a two page resume in state government, there's no limit. So your resume could be 18 pages long. Um, but this, the saving is that if you create that document in Word, then you can just cut and paste. So when they ask those questions like Johnny filled out, tell us, do you have two years in office administrative work? Yes. And then you could cut and paste into that answer. Um, let's see, after submitting an application, can we still see the applications with the job description? I was not able to do so. No, um, once the posting comes down, the job comes down, it goes, it goes away. So I highly encourage everyone when you apply for a position to print off the job posting as well and keep that. So when you get that phone call or email, that says we'd like to talk to you or schedule you for an interview for a PSA or an office assistant, you might not remember which job you've applied for. So if you save the posting, you can match up those um, job um, posting numbers to one another. Um, any remote position, it really does depend on the actual position. Um, some of our audit positions are remote. Most of our trainee positions, well, actually all of our trainee positions, when you start out, you're always in the office because our, our trainees have classroom and on the job training. So they're all in office and then it just depends on the nature um, of the job if you can then go to remote um, or not. Um, someone asked, um, I'm trying to scroll back and Johnny, feel free to jump in here. Yeah. So um, for those who are looking for those apprenticeship or internship opportunities, uh, the Illinois Department of Revenue has three trainee positions where you'll become a state employee during the first 12 months on, on the job training. At, at the end of those 12 months, you will have an automatic promotion as long as you meet the minimal qualifications to pass to the next level. Uh, those opportunities are called revenue tax specialist training, revenue auditor training, special agent training and collection officer training. Uh, as of today, we don't have any posted on our work on Illinois.gov, uh, but we post them on, on a continuous basis. Uh, so what I tell people, as long as they attended our events and they're signed up to receive text message alerts, or they're able to receive any of our emails, uh, as soon as a position becomes available, let's say you chose that you want a position in the Chicagoland area, and a position becomes available here, I will be able to email you and let you know, hey, this position's uh, just posted, please apply. And you have to apply within that time frame when the position is open on the system. Uh, once that position is closed, then you're not able to apply. Uh, our revenue tax specialist trainee, we, we hire that throughout the year. Uh, with that position, uh, as long as you have a bachelor's degree, um, at this time, uh, that's the minimum requirement, a bachelor's degree, it doesn't matter what background it is, um, we will be putting you forward to uh, the list um, for that position currently there is no interview um, but let's say if there's only one position posted for that position uh, you're going to be 
competing with 400 other people. So this is where you want to make sure your resume has a lot of strong customer service skills, ability to be able to um, communicate uh, with people, communicate with others within your team, uh, be able to communicate via email. Uh, those are some skills that they're looking for for those positions specifically. Uh, another position that we will be coming up for, it will be the revenue auditor training position. Uh, for that one, you do need a bachelor's either in finance, business administration, uh, accounting, and you do need 21 accounting credits for that position. Uh, for that position, as soon as that position becomes available on the system, you do need to apply, I said. Um, it does have usually anywhere between 10 to 15 days. Um, usually it's a business days. Uh, in case there's a holiday, it might be 15, but usually it's about 10 business days. Uh, so roughly about two weeks for that position to be posted on the system. Um, for those who formerly were working with the state of Illinois, uh, because you left the state, you will have to reapply for the state as a, a former employee. Um, you, you don't receive any additional points for that uh, because you're no longer part of the union. Uh, so you'll be coming out as somebody coming from the outside, uh, but you're able to apply uh, as anybody else. So uh, there is no reinstatement uh, opportunities at this point, at least I don't know of. Ms. Julie, do you? Um, it depends on the position. Um, there are, it's very rare. They do check for reinstatement rights um, to make sure that um, if anyone has reinstatement rights, um, but it is rare. So not to say it never happens, but um, gen it would depend on case by case. Um, I wanna make sure Nadia um, asked about apprentice apprenticeships and uh, internships and Johnny did cover those. We don't have apprenticeships. Um, we have internships in our legal department right now, but at, at this time, those are the that's the only program area that we do have interns um, working right now. We are working on that and hopefully we'll have something to come. Uh, Carl had a question, a specific question, and Carl, you have two avenues. Highly encourage you to reach out to CMS Counseling Office and they can work with you, um, look at your military experience and help you kind of navigate which jobs that you would be um, qualified for. You can also email Johnny um, or I when you get that follow-up email that he will send out and we can try and help you do that. Mary asked about changing your profile and you can go in and change your profile anytime you want. You can add things, um, uh, different jobs that you've done, uh, schooling, experience, volunteer work. You can always go back in and update your profile. Um, so as far as the timeline for the interview, um, it does take time uh, with the state of Illinois uh, because central management service is the main HR for all 27 agencies. So they have to review all applications on the system. Uh, so usually it could take anywhere from three to four weeks for them to review, give a grade and rank everybody and then send it over to our team. Uh, so that is just for the interview for those who are going to be chosen for the interview. That takes three to four weeks. So um, maximum four weeks. Uh, usually that's kind of the, what it's going because of the number of applications that are uh, being put into the system. Um, and then we don't have any access to those. Those are directly through central management services who. Uh, does the process and they're the ones who are giving the the, the score and, and the ranking. Um, additional for those who are looking for internship opportunities, uh, when you go to work.illinois.gov uh, and you write intern, it's going to give you all agencies that have intern opportunities. So let's say the Department of Revenue doesn't have that opportunity, but the Department of Child and Family Services does, you'll have that position posted on the system. So uh, for those who are looking for intern positions, you do write internship or intern uh, on a search box and it'll give you those opportunities. So in case Illinois Department of Revenue does have one, it, it will come up. Uh, so those who are interested in that, you know, that's the best way of doing it. Uh, as far as the questions, uh, these questions are preset by each uh, HR team. Um, basically is based on the information that we need for the minimal qualification and the preferred qualifications. We're gonna ask you a lot of the times, uh, you, your years of experience, type of experience, and if it's a very uh, specific skill that we need and we're looking for, it's gonna be very specific to that um, career field that you're looking to get into. So um, as we said, those questions are important to answer. Uh, a lot of the time people disqualify themselves uh, just by saying, please look at my resume. So make sure you, you write out everything uh, on those uh, application questions. Um, sorry, it's a timeline. 
Carl asked a question about applying for multiple positions and absolutely we encourage you to do that. Um, sometimes we get over 400 applicants for one position. And that's um, goes back to what Johnny mentioned earlier. Why does it take so long to get a job with the state? We just the volume of people that apply. Um, and when we have that many applicants, sometimes we have to do what we call a random draw. So if we have 400 people apply, um, after we go through and look at the minimum qualifications, we take those folks out and then we just do a random draw of uh, 12 to 15 people to contact. And as Johnny said earlier, some of our positions don't even require an interview. That some of the trainee titles, you just simply apply with your bachelor's degree, um, submit your transcripts, and you would get a phone call um, asking you if you wanted to be offered a position. Again, depending on the volume. So the auditor position that we are referring to, the revenue auditor trainee that's coming up very soon, we are hiring 60 new what we call rats. Um, so you, the best thing for you to do is to go out to our webpage and sign up for what we call job alerts. We will not send you any information on taxes. We will simply send the information that you designate. So if you are looking for a particular type of job, you indicate that when you sign up and then as jobs post, then um, you'll get a notification either text or email that jobs have posted. Johnny said earlier, they are up for 15 days. You have to apply during those 15 days. If it is a minute beyond that posting date, it's too late. Um, and yes, again, apply for multiple positions as at every state agency as, as anything that you meet the men quals on, you should be applying for. Um, uh, how many times do you post jobs as, as, either as they become available or in areas like uh, auditing where we're expanding. Um, the part of the time is the, um, the time delay is that it, we have to work with CMS. So once you apply, your application goes over there, they evaluate to see if you make the minimum qualifications, they come back to us. Um, if there's only 15 people that apply, we could contact all 15 people. Um, there's also something called contractual rights. So if you are in the union and you apply for a position that under the contract you have contractual rights for, you get that you get offered that position first. You get first priority on that. So if there are um, individuals with rights to a job, we have to contact those individual first. And if there's six people on a list, we go down that list until someone says, yes, I'm interested in the job and then they take it. In that case, we don't go to what's called other means, which is um, anyone like on the street outside. Um, if there are, if the position does not have contractual rights candidate, then we go to other means and we would either contact you for an interview and that is usually a panel. Um, they are virtual. It will be um, a monitor um, moderating the process and then usually two people on the call as well. Um, they take notes. So as you're answering the questions, they are um, taking down notes of how you respond. And then you are graded on those interview questions. All the interview questions are the same for every candidate. We allow an hour. Um, and uh, the questions are very geared towards the specific position. So you'll wanna make sure that you keep that job posting when you submit your application so that if you get called for an interview, you can go back um, and review the job posting. Those job postings are the, what we call, ours are called um, job descriptions. We call them 104s and that's the name of our form. And the job postings are literally right out of the 104. So you'll have a very good idea of what the job would entail and then how to respond to the interview questions. Uh, so I, I know some people were asked about coming from the private sector to the government sector. Uh, I will let you guys know, uh, as of March, it's been six years since I started with the state. I started with the Illinois Department of Employment Security. Prior to working for the state, I, I worked for a non-for-profit organization. Uh, my process was a little bit different because at that time, they had the CMS 100, so Central Management Service. They had a paper application that you had to complete, uh, and then you would have to come in, take a test, uh, receive a grade, um, and after that, they'll send you a letter letting you know you qualify for this position. And then if a position becomes available, they'll send you a letter saying that this position is available in Cook County, are you interested? So that process took about eight months for me from the time I went into 
uh, applying. Uh, I applied for about 12 positions. Uh, from those 12 positions, um, I was called for seven to see if I was interested for interview. Uh, but this didn't happen until about nine to 12 months after I had put the application. So sometimes it took that long back in the day. Uh, they're getting a little bit better with that. So right now we're in about four months, four to five months as far as the turnaround time. Um, but the, the biggest thing is because you are dealing with the public sector and you're meeting with the general public, you do have to have strong customer service skills, uh, be able to have those skills of conflict resolution. Um, because with those type of skills and you're meeting with the general public, you're going to be able to assist people that are coming uh, either in need or they're coming because they're having a problem or they're coming into the office because they're having an issue with their payment. So sometimes they're going to be a little escalated. So you have to be able to uh, meet with these people and be able to talk to them. So customer service skills are very important for any position with the state because most of the time you are going to be dealing with general public, uh, some contractors for the state, or you're going to be dealing with other coworkers with the state agency. So uh, coming from the private sector, understand that those skills that you do have from the private sector, you're able to transfer them over to the government skills, especially those uh, with dealing with people and be able to have those relations with people uh, with customer service, conflict resolution. Uh, CMS is central management services. Um, as I said, that's like the main HR uh, for the state of Illinois, for all the 27 agencies under the governor's office. Um, and we're under them as far as when we receive the information, uh, the work.illinois.gov website, it's run by them, by CMS. And then we we put our information on there as far as our job postings. Um, as far as for counseling email, uh, I will post again the, the email uh, so, so everybody, but I, I will be sending a, a follow-up email with that information on there. I also will be sending an email with uh, quick tips for um, resume uh, and also, although I did a, a video, not a video, but I did a live, uh, I do have some PowerPoint pres uh, presentation slides that I will be sharing with you uh, that kind of goes through the same process. So. Uh, if you do have any additional questions, when I send the email, that's going to have our point of contact information and you're able to reach out to us by there. Um, as far as the number of jobs we post, it depends. Uh, I know like a few weeks ago, we had like four that posted in one week. Uh, then we had one posted the week after. So it's just dependent uh, on, you know, when positions are approved to be posted onto the system uh, and the need of the department. So, you know, it, it varies depending on each agency. Um, with us, it, it's just depending on where it's going to be posted. Uh, obviously, our main focus uh, in Springfield is because that's where all taxes are processed. So whenever you do have your income taxes, as you see, uh, it has the address down in Springfield. Well, that's where all the taxes are processed. Uh, we do have other services on the other five locations, uh, but like the main hub for uh, income tax and other taxes are processed directly to the Springfield office. Uh, so those who are interested in moving to Springfield and, and seeing the opportunity down with IDOR, uh, you're able to grow within Illinois Department of Revenue. Uh, we do have a lot of employees that started as an entry level position. Now they're in management. Uh, we do have a strong connection with everybody uh, through our rec system. We have a rec club where we try to do uh, activities outside of work. So we're able to uh, meet with other members who are interested, let's say in sports, interested in culinary. Uh, we do have a big uh, rec club where we uh, give out money to charities via um, like during Christmas and, and Thanksgiving, uh, we, we have a, a charity event where we auction off different things uh, that we uh, provide to the, to the teams through our rec club. So Illinois Department of Revenue, as, as Ms. Julie has said, is very strong uh, ties. Uh, we do have a lot of people that grow from within. I've been with Illinois Department of Revenue for six months. So far, it's been great. Uh, I have nothing to complain. Uh, I came from, like I said, I came from Illinois Department of Employment Security. Um, great thing about working for the state, uh, you're able to move from one agency to another. So let's say you don't start with Department of Revenue and you start with one of the other agencies through an entry level position, and then you wanna move up, um, you're able to do that. Uh, we do have the opportunity to have upper mobility program through some of those that are targeted titles. So for those that might not have a degree, uh, myself, I didn't have a degree when I joined the team, uh, when I joined IDES, I completed my degree and then I kind of move over to this team. So uh, there's opportunities to grow within the state of Illinois. Uh, if you do come in with like an MBA or higher degree, there is opportunities to get into those senior 
uh, leadership positions. We have senior public administrator positions, uh, public service administrator positions, or more management positions. Uh, we do have some targeted titles for a law degree. Like right now, we do have a position. Um, anybody who currently has a law degree. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there's different opportunities depending on what level you're coming in. Um, like I said, some people might come in as entry level. Some might, people will come in with higher degrees. It just depends. The state has 27 different agencies, so you might not be able to find one with us, but you might be able to find it with some of the other our other partners. Um, as far as our jobs allowed to ask, we have certain disabilities. Um, as I said, those are voluntary questions that we ask on the on our um, on our application that you don't have to disclose any of that. If you do have a disability and you need a accommodation, we do have ADA accommodations for those who do have disabilities. So in case uh, you do or you are offered a position, you're able to ask for those accommodations if need be. But you don't have to disclose any of that information uh, prior to employment. And Carl asked about when the revenue auditor trainee position will be posted. We are waiting anxiously, um, excitedly. We have sent the job description over with some revisions and it's at CMS, it has to be processed. Um, so we, it's just, we're waiting day by day. So as soon as we get that um, updated job description back, we can put the posting in and get that posted and it will go live. Again, we're looking for 60 new revenue, revenue auditor trainee titles. So um, the best thing is to sign up for the job alerts on our webpage, and then that way you'll be notified when that position posts. Um, so Ms. Lisa had a question about a uh, position with disabilities. Uh, because we do have special programs, uh, there was a program that we had a specific position, and you did have to have a disability for that position. So if, if, if it specifically states on the application that you need to have this disability in order to be um, it's because it's part of a program that the Department of Human Services works with us to assist those with disabilities. So they're going to ask you specifically for that disability because you have to meet those requirements uh, to be able to enter to that program. Uh, so that's the only reason they probably asked for that question for disabilities. But other than that, they won't unless the position is it was posted directly for those who um, have to meet that criteria. So the Department of Human Services works with us to have certain positions that are posted directly for those persons who have a disability and we're trying to increase our number of persons with disabilities in the department. So uh, that's why they might ask that question. Uh, but yeah, other than that, they wouldn't be asked a question and disqualify you unless you it was a targeted position. So if they did, I apologize. But like I said, it most likely was a targeted position. It was for somebody with uh, that disability and that was preset by the Department of Human Services and we had to go through that standard. So uh, yeah, other than that, we will not be asking any questions about disabilities unless it's something that's posted on the system for our job posting. And Liza asked about enroll, being enrolled in the bachelor's program and applying for a position um, with the bachelor's requirement. And yes, you can. You indicate that you're in school and um, give your graduation date, approximate graduation date. Um, there's a, I believe it is a 90 day window uh, at least 90 day window. So, I mean, if you just started your bachelor's and you're in your first semester, then, um, no, but if you're, um, in January and you know, you're graduating in May, just indicate that on the application. Cause many times we post those jobs in, let's say April, and then your start date would be August. So, um, so absolutely make sure you indicate that on there. Um, do we offer a virtual job fair? This is our virtual job fair. Um, we do the calls monthly um, to try to, and we, again, we change the date and time to try to get as many people as we can. Um, as I said, I will be posting the email on the email that I'm gonna follow up with everybody who attended this event. Uh, it'll have directly a link to their email uh, for CMS um, counseling. So um, for, for anybody who does have any additional questions as far as signing up for alerts, I have all that on the email. So you're able to sign up for the alerts, especially like you're looking for that trainee position. Uh, if you did attend this event and you answer those questions prior to registering for this event, uh, the reason I have those questions, specifically if, you are, if you're interested in the trainee position or if you're looking for a position in Chicago, uh, it's when a position becomes available, I try to reach out to everybody. Uh, or if a position is available in Springfield and they said they want to work in Springfield, I'll send it directly to you. So um, the follow-up email will have all that information for you, uh, especially if you did attend our event today. 
Can Marissa ask a question about having a bachelor's degree in science in elementary education? Um, it really just depends on the minimum qualifications of the job. So, um, again, some of our jobs, like the revenue tax specialist, require a bachelor's degree. We don't care what it is in. Um, so, and a lot of those um, jobs, as Johnny mentioned, um, require customer service um, experience, or that's very helpful. It really just depends. Um, again, if you uh, look at the minimum qualifications for each job, and if you meet the min quals, then apply for everything that is out there. We, every state agency is hiring right now. Um, someone asked a question about working for IDS through a temp agency, and do we think that that would help them um, if she applied or he applied for a position? Um, again, be very um, detailed in your explanation on your answers when you apply. You don't get any extra points for that, but you have been working in that job, so you would be able to speak to the specifics of the job. If I applied, I didn't work in that job, so I couldn't be as detailed in my answers. So. Um, I'm not guaranteeing you that you would get the job. I'm just saying if you really did a thorough um, job of um, explaining your answers, that that would help you. For every position you have to keep in mind, I believe someone asked earlier, I was uh, overqualified or at least qualified. The thing we don't know is who else is applying for the jobs. So while I feel like I'm the most qualified, Johnny has applied and Johnny has more experience or more education than I do. And I don't know that Johnny's applied. So Johnny gets offered the position. It really comes down to who else has applied for the position. Um, so I encourage everyone to apply um, as often and uh, for as many positions that you meet the minimum qualifications on. Uh, now, as far as the websites, work.illinois.gov, that is for state agency positions. So those are for state agencies under the governor's office. Uh, those positions are going to be posted on work.illinois.gov. Uh, the website Illinois Job Link, uh, they do post jobs from the state in there, but they also post all the other job postings. That means from the private sector. Uh, Illinois Job Link, uh, it's a, with the Illinois Department of Employment Security. That's where they have... Um, they assist those currently receiving unemployment insurance, or they assist those uh, employees who are looking for candidates through that system. But if you are interested in state employment, work.illinois.gov is the main page that you would like to go to. Uh, on the work.illinois.gov main page, um, the search by keyword, uh, that's where you're able to search either by county, job title. Um, so let's say somebody has a master's or they have a law degree. Um, just write law degree or lawyer and it's going to give you that position uh as i as currently we do have a position for lawyers if you do have that interest um with the state some of the names are not going to be the same from the outside um so make sure you look for uh the name of the position for lawyers is called uh, i'm sorry it's uh technical advisors and we have some other names uh depending on each department so uh for us, if you look for the technical advisor position, uh, that is for somebody who currently has a law degree and is able to practice in the state of Illinois. And Valentina asked a question if Johnny and I can take your resumes and um, uh, offer counseling and evaluation and no, we cannot, I'm sorry. Um, you have to go through CMS for that. I think we have all of the questions. Um, scrolling yeah. back. As far as political activity, we don't um, we don't discuss that in at work. I mean, um, yeah, restrictions on political activity. Yeah, uh, you're not able to do that on on work time. That's just in general through all state agencies. So it's not just specific with IDOR. And if your question is, um, do you have to know someone to get a job at the state? Like it used to be, the answer is no, you do not. Every state agency is hiring right now. So it's a great time to apply at the state. Um, all the agencies have openings. And um, so I would encourage you to look at the job board, the main job board at the state of Illinois and look for anything that you meet the men qual for and then apply. So, if you do have any experience um, under state employment through internship or working with a subcontractor for some of the other agencies, uh, just make sure when you uh, write that on your resume, uh, it has that information on there. So, let's say you work for an organization that was under IDES, make sure you write the name of the organization, but on your job duties, make sure you write 
uh, worked under the contract with Illinois Department of Employment Security, or if you were an internship for any of the other agencies, make sure you write that. Um, although you might have done an internship with the state of Illinois um, because of contractual rights, that doesn't mean you're going to be able to receive a position. You will need to apply like some of the other agencies would. And another question again about remote work, it depends on the position. So some of our auditors are at work remote. They worked in the field anyway, so they work remote now. Um, if you are hired for a trainee position, those positions all have mandatory in classroom and um, on the job training. So they are all in person. You have to come into the office for those. And once you get out of training, it depends on the position and the area. Um, of where you work. Keep in mind that we process taxes. And so we don't want people going home, taking home your tax return and working on it at home and your neighbor comes over to grill out and then there's your tax return sitting on the table. So we have some pretty strict um, guidelines that we have to follow under the federal IRS. So all of that very high level confidential taxpayer information has to stay in the building. So if your job requires you to actually touch those tax returns, then no, you can't do that from home. So for those who are asking about the agencies, so this is the main page work.illinois.gov. Here's a search bar where you look for the title of the position you're looking for. Here you put the city and state that you're looking. Agency is going to give you all the agencies that currently are have a posting on the system. It doesn't have all the agencies here because if they don't have a posting, they will not be on there. So currently, with all the positions that are posted on the system, they're going to have all the agencies that are uh, on there. Uh, but let's say if, if a position is not available, then the the agency is not going to be on there. I believe. Uh, so let's say Illinois Gaming Board. You go Illinois Gaming Board search job. Uh, is going to give you all those positions within that agency. So as for us, Department of Revenue, um, once again, is going to give you those positions that are currently available uh, to apply for. So um, let's say you want to work presidential library, currently have one position available. Uh, for those who are looking for those higher level positions, senior public service administrator and public service administrator, those are management positions. Uh, so welcome to look for those positions if you're interested in that. Uh, but as I said, I will be sending an email with the contact information for central management services to receive counseling. So you're able to reach out to them directly with your um, transcripts and your resume, and they will be able to give you a list of positions that you might be able to qualify to apply for. So th that's the great thing about working with central management services counseling is that they're able to provide you th with those opportunities, not only with Illinois Department of Revenue, but with all the other state agencies. Um, so, yeah, as far as job family here, you're able to, so like if you're looking for administrative, clerical, communications, facility, uh, if you're looking for technology, uh, the state of Illinois uh, Department of Innovation Technology, that's the one with IT. Um, so a lot of times we have people that ask, do we have IT positions with the Department of Revenue? Uh, not specifically with us, uh, they get hired through the Department of Innovation Technology and then they get um, placed with us. So. Uh, for anybody who's looking for IT, that's kind of how that goes. So we're right at the cusp at seven. Um, if you guys uh, have any additional questions, as I said, I will be emailing you uh, at the end of completion. Uh, we do have a survey at the end when you exit out. Uh, can you please uh, complete the survey. Let us know how we did. Uh, if you do have any questions, we'll be able to answer those through the survey too. So. Uh, you guys have a great evening. Thank you for participating today, and uh, we'll see you next time. Good night, everyone. Have a super evening. Take care. Thank you.